Welcome back. Now, the yet-to-be-identified gunman who kidnapped 287 students and teachers from the LEA Primary School and the Government Secondary School, Koriga, Kaduna State, Northwest Nigeria, have demanded 1 billion naira for their release. They've also given a deadline that would elapse on the 27th of March 2024 for the payment of the ransom. They say if that deadline isn't met, they would start killing the children. It's as heartbreaking as it can get, especially for the parents of these innocent children. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu has directed that no ransom should be paid to kidnappers, no matter the amount of pressure. Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, who disclosed this, added that the government is reviewing the offer of foreign assistance in the battle against kidnapping and other high-profile crimes in the country. Now, the Kuriga kidnap occurred a few days after about several after several people now were also kidnapped by Boko Haram insurgents in Borono State, Northeast Nigeria. The information minister assured that all the abducted persons in Borono and Kaduna states will be brought back safely pretty soon, saying the security agencies are working round the clock to ensure that uh, they are rescued. Now, thousands of students and teachers have been abducted in several attacks in Nigeria since the first case was recorded in 2014 when Boko Haram terrorists kidnapped 276 schoolgirls from government uh, girls' secondary school, Chibok. That's in Borono State. The latest mass abduction has once again brought to the fore the debate over the establishment of state police. Now being joined on the program by Lawrence Alobi, the former Commissioner of Police, Federal Capital Territory. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on the program. And by the way, he joins us from Abuja. Thanks a lot for your time, sir. Um, let me start off by asking, sir, this issue that uh, we're currently faced with, I'm talking about the, the incident now at uh, Kuriga community in, in Kaduna State, where the bandits are, are, are demanding one billion naira ransom and they've given a deadline that if uh, the money was not paid, that uh, they would start killing the children. How, how should the government handle this? How should the security ag agencies now handle it? Yeah, thank you. First, let me thank you for having me. Uh, like I said, this incident and many others are very embarrassing to this country. It has shown that uh, we have not been able to live up to our expectation in line with Section 14B of the Constitution, which provides that security and the welfare of the citizens of the citizens of the citizens shall be the primary purpose of government. The security is a driver of all other uh, aspects of human development in terms of, in terms of de democracy, economic development, political development. Dem security is key and central. That's why that, that section of the Constitution is very very sacrosanct. Yeah. The, the primary purpose of government is the security and welfare of the people. And that should be the concern of every government, not only the federal government, from the local government to the state, co state government to the federal government. This is an embarrassing situation to this nation. It is shameful, it's embarrassing, and it's not acceptable at all. We have such incidents of cheap girls, others called abduction and so forth, and we, we should learn, security, our security agencies should learn from the past mistakes. Because, you see, Intelligence is, I said, there's intelligent failure in the country. The DSS, the police, the military, also agencies have their intelligent agency. Why should they not come, they should not come together and say no to this? Before anything happens in any community, they should be able to get, get information and then follow, analyze that information and follow up and take, take action. So I think this is an indication that there's a failure of intelligence, intel, intel, information, information gathering and intelligence. Intel, intel, intelligence. Because this, this abductors, I'm sure they, they didn't just, they were not just two or three in number. Mm. They might be in great number. And they must have come with either with vehicle or motorcycle, and they didn't come, they, they are not spirit. They must have passed through the route, through some roads, and those roads are accessible to the community. That's why to the country today, nation orientation has, has also not, not been living up to expectation. Misinformation to see how nation orientation should carry out a massive public elections on the role of the citizens and in mm. security, peace and security in the country. That under Section 24 be of the Constitution. What is the role of the citizens? What, what can the citizens do to, to promote peace and security in the country? Because the citizens are the prime beneficiary of the of security environment. When security is threatened, the citizens suffer. If there's improved security, the citizens benefit. So they be the prime beneficiary. The citizens could therefore incubate upon the citizens to assist security agencies by giving information, by supporting information security agencies, 
But somebody discovered the Jesus and gave the information. But now this happened. I'm sure they took over three hours and there was nothing, nothing to intercept. They went freely. They had a free day and they carried all the children and went away. And, and, it's, and it's, so it, it, it's so surprising that this would happen and then it, it would take a long time before there would be any intervention at all. And it, it's also quite instructive. You talked about uh, national orientation because from what we have gathered from the villagers there at that community, uh, they, they said they, they actually saw these people, that they, 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 the bandits actually came to that village the night before, that they noticed strange movement, that they saw them the night before, so that they, they passed the night in, in that community. But surprisingly, none of them raised any alarm at all. They just could not reach any, they, they didn't make any attempt at all to, to reach out to security agencies or report anything until this incident happened. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, that national orientation should carry out a massive popular enlightenment on the role of the citizens in promoting peace and security. Because they should be conscious, security conscious, so develop, develop, develop observation, observation skills, how to be really conscious, what should they how to prevent, hmm. prevent issues when they happen, how to respond to such situations. But we don't just do everything, just us, they must carry it to the grassroots, the grassroots. Crime is locally based, local, local, is locally based. Com crimes are more com committed because the criminals, they look for soft spots. Where they know that there will be no resistance. And before they carry out it, they also carry out their surveillance. They carry their surveillance and monitor the area and show that, yes, if they, they respond, there will be no resistance. I cannot see why the police, the security agencies, should not respond. And again, on the other hand, too, we cannot blame security agencies because the government itself has not followed them very well. Some police divisions have no police vehicles. How can they respond? No communication system. You know? So in this case, you need to empower them, the police which is the prime, prime, the, the prime agency, the lead agency in internal security. And policing to need, need to be not need to be done in such a way that so security in the 21st century is, is technology driven. How can, why should the government not employ drones? The police will employ drones, the Air Force will employ drones, employ drones massive, massively. And when, this is, when they employ these drones, they, those, they can communicate with the, the, the ground forces who cannot respond to the situation. And there should be coordination between security agencies. They seem to be working at, they, they seem to be working at, they know, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not synergy and collaboration among the security agencies. Because they're supposed to gather intelligence and share that intelligence to other people, they can work as a team. Collective effort, unified action. They need to work as fingers, fingers of one hand. I want to carry my, any object with my hand, no finger will say that I will not carry. But some of these agencies, they want to, want to like I said, this, this, this is not competition. It's co cooperation and collaboration, not competition. They have a common ob objective, common, 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 common mandate to ensure Nigeria is safe and secure for all of our But, but let, let me ask you, so sir. So the government should ensure that. S Sorry to interject. Yes. Let, let me ask you. Do you think um, if we had state police, uh, an incident like this uh, might probably not have happened? Yeah, but then, but then even if it's state police, the same police on ground, the, I, the police, the commissioner of police, the DPO, the red commander, the station officer, will not wait for the IG to give instruction for him to respond. That's why they are there. The commissioner of police is there to ensure that the command under his jurisdiction is safe and secure and has to respond to all situations. The area commander, the de deputy operations, the area commander, the DPOs, the, that's what they are. So even if it's the no police, the same, the, the same police. The point is that how capacity, how empowered are they? Have they built their capacity? How are they well trained? Have they been empowered? They are talking about equipment, for instance. They don't have communication, you don't have mobility, you don't have vehicles. You cannot expect anything from them. They, it's the government that has brought this problem. Look at now at National Assembly, they're, show, they're sharing billions, sharing billions. But some DPOs in my, in my community, I'm from Cross Mountain, he come, my DPO has no patrol vehicle. How can you want to respond to it when there's in an incident? Mm. So this is the, this is, these are the, the challenges, and this is very embarrassing. Now, now, so uh, how, the how government to be sincere. How should this this issue of ransom demand now? How how should it be handled in the face of the threat that um, this for bandits me, have made? For me, I don't, I don't. When I was in service, I tell my men, Abuja, get the criminals dead or alive. I don't remark with criminals because when they have a point, they will, they, will look, they can do the same thing to you. So. But the way it is now, we have to apply wisdom. Okay. What is, what is, what is wisdom? Wisdom is application of knowledge. We'll have to analyze the situation and look at the best option. The best option is it to, is it to, to strike 
and go on the rescue, aggressive rescue mission, there will be some, ca there be some, fatality, some casualty, even among the children. Or are we now to get to, to say, okay, let's negotiate with them. Because they can, even they negotiate with them, for me, they can negotiate with them and give them counterfeit money they cannot spend. Right? They can, mm. they can negotiate with them, give them, give, give, give them fake, fake currency, which they cannot spend. I'm not supposed to say this openly, but this can be a strategy. Yeah. You must be creative in your thinking in security operations. You have to be creative. You must think ahead and plan ahead. And I don't like issue of reaction, reactive, reactive policing and so forth. You need to be practicing ahead, plan ahead and walk ahead. They really know, the, the police and the police, they really know some of these soft spots that they go to schools. What effort have they done? And then the government should make us a policy. When you develop, when you start these schools or buildings or estate, you must, you must mainstream security and integrate security in your planning. And what about you must have security. Security component of that, of that estate. Security component of the, of the school. And that has to be a policy in the federal government. And again, the, go the government should see that they should, there's national policing framework in the country. Pro policing is not all, all commands are fair. Hmm. Vilante, all sorts of people come out, will emerge as to do policy, policing. There should be a national policing strategy and framework that will guide, guide all those coming to say they want to assist the police. When I was CPFCT, when the military, the DSS, the civil defense come, I will tell you where I need assistance. Because the discussion towards the constitution says the military coming in aid in aid of the police. I'll tell you why I'll tell you why I need assistance. But now and some of officers will allow them. The people they usurp their function, they do policing, they leave military operations. So well, there should be a national policing strategy and framework to guide the base, they be everyone will know boundaries, know how to do what and so forth. And they believe there be a direction, the police give a direction. And the latter lacuna has caused some of these problems. All right. So the government, the federal government, and the state government should come out to develop, to develop the political will to say no to security, no to insecurity in the country. We must do everything, put our resources to ensure that we make sure that this country is safe for all, all our about, about citizens. And, and I think that's the best place to leave it. Thank you very much, Mr. Lawrence Alobi, former Commissioner of Police, Federal Capital Territory. Thank you so very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. It's our country. We're not our country. We ought to want to make sacrifices and contribute and make it better for all of e exactly. us. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, well, that's how much we can take on the program this week. But thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.